Hey, Steve Lindsley, welcome to my shop. I want to share with you my latest turning project, which I'm calling a staved and segmented vase. Uh, the bottom part is uh, staved construction, uh, and the top piece and the bottom ring are uh, segmented construction. This particular uh, piece has got some uh, curly maple on the bottom. Uh, this is uh, Jatoba, and the top and the bottom rings are uh, Wingate. Um, it was a lot of fun, to, a lot of fun to make. Uh, I got two videos on this. The, the first video uh, shows the stave construction. Uh, so if you're not interested in that and just want to see the segmented piece and the, uh, how I put it together and did final turning, go ahead and jump over to the second video uh, and watch that. So, um, but I hope, you, I hope you get a chance to watch both of them. In fact, I, I, once, you got the process, once I had the process figured out and made the jigs, I thought, well, what the heck, I might as well make a couple more. So I actually made three of these. This one is the second one. Uh, again, a curly maple. This is mesquite, and the top and bottom, again, are wingay. Uh, and then the third one is a, a different piece with the uh, curly maple. And this is some spalted oak that I, res I rescued from a firewood pile. Um, must be 20 years ago or more. Uh, the top and the bottom on this one are were some um, scrap ebony that I had. I wanted ebony for all of them, but at $140 a board foot, it really wasn't. It really wasn't uh, uh, feasible. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, on this video, I'm going to show you how I make the stave piece, and in video number two, I'm going to show you how I did do do the top, uh, the bottom, and put the whole thing together. So. Uh, I hope you enjoy the videos, and thanks for watching. Well, if you watched any of my other segmented turning videos, you know I like to start with a plan. Uh, I usually draw them out. Uh, there are programs you can buy that help you design segmented projects. Um, there's also the whole calculation of the segment uh, length and all that is certainly sp suited to a spreadsheet, but end of the day, I like to put pencil to paper and in a draw out my own and use a little calculator and come up with the uh, answers answers to the uh, table, what I need. Um, this one I said is a staved vessel. So from here to here is about seven and a half inches. I don't know if I got that in the picture or not, but it's, it's about seven and a half inches, uh, the staved piece. Um, and then there's one, two, three, four rings at the top and a, a base ring. Uh, I'm not quite sure I needed to do this. I felt like that I'd maybe draw in a circle looking like at a top view of the thing would would help me out, but I, I'm not quite sure, and those are not coming out very good. Apologize for that. Um, I'm not sure that helped any, because I could have just said if I wanted it to be five inches wide at the top, I could have just done the math and come up with the, uh, the segments need to be two inches long at the top. Uh, because this tapers down and goes to a smaller um, diameter at the bottom, uh, there's a certain amount of math involved, which <laughs> is, some of it is, uh, I understand it, uh, I just don't want to do it. So, um, <laughs> that was, so uh, I mean, let me show you that here in a minute. So the, the pieces I want, I do a little diagram here. The, the stave pieces are going to be two inches at the top and an inch and a quarter at the bottom. So... That's what I, what I came up with. So let, let me show you how I come up with the rest of the information. Whenever I need to uh, figure out something or look something up, I go, I go to this reference book, which is The Art of Segmented Wood Turning by Malcolm Tibbetts. Uh, if you do segmented turning, you know who Malcolm Tibbetts is. Uh, and if you don't do it, um, Google Malcolm and look at some of his work, like this vase that's on the front here. Um, it really does some excellent work, and, and uh, I use this book a lot for references. And he, he does have a chapter in in the book on making staved um, vases or vessels. Uh, and the, inf the information I really need is in the appendix. So let me get that opened up, and I'll show you that. In the appendix of Malcolm's book is a, uh, a chart for compound miter angles for staved constructed forms. Uh, over here are all the, the formulas, the inverse, tangent, minus, cosine, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, like I said, that, that was, uh, while I could do it, uh, it gives me a headache. So it's just easier to go to the chart. 
I know I'm going to have eight staves, so I needed to know two things. I needed to either know, well, three things. I either needed to know the slope, which is defined down here, or I needed to know the um, miter angle and the blade angle. Uh, once I knew something, something there, I, c I could figure out what I needed to do. So before I, I kind of backed into it, so before what I, I did is uh, I made a sled. Uh, let's see, let me back out. Actually, I made two sleds. This is the one for the first cut. Uh, and after a bunch of trial and error, I said I probably should just measure what it is. <laughs> so when I measured the angle, um, it came out to be just about 83 in degrees and change. Uh, so if I go back to the back to the table and come down here to where it says for the miter angle miter angle of 83.88 eight staves the blade angle needs to be 20 21.69 um, um, there's no way this old delta contractor saw is going to get to 21 <laughs> 21.69. But I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it as close as I can, uh, and then we'll just have to do, um, I'll, I'll glue this piece together in two halves and then true up the joint between them, because uh, it's going to be a little bit off. There's, there's no way it's going to come out um, exactly right. So uh, I know my angle is 83 and change, and I know my blade angle is 21.69. As, as I mentioned, I made a, I actually made a couple of jigs um, so one, the first one is to cut the first angle on the on the stave, uh, and you can see that uh, that there's an angle here on the piece. So when I put a piece in there, uh, let me find a piece. When I put a piece in there and lock it down, it'll cut the first side with the widest part being up here. Uh, so that works. That worked pretty well. And then I said, okay, fine. Uh, that was the first cut. So then I made another jig. Um, for the second cut, which was just a matter of taking a piece after I cut the first one and putting it in the jig. And because that is taller than it needs to be, I put a little spacer on there. And then I run that through the saw. And what that does, that gives me a stave that's the, the right side. It's about two inches at the top, and it's about an inch and a quarter at the bottom. Uh, it tapers down. It's got the right angle on it. Uh, so before I committed to any kind of good stock, I, I made a, let me back up a little bit here. Um, I made a um, piece of ply, well I can't back up I guess. Uh, I used some plywood and, and uh, cut some staves out of plywood and glued them together, uh, treated the edges up just to make sure that I could get them. This just held together with tape. I actually made several of these. The first didn't really, first few didn't come out very, <laughs> out very well um, so they wound up in the scrap pile so finally I got one that was um, what I wanted uh, so that I know my jigs was right uh, and setting the saw at 21.69 is nearly impossible like I've already said so I get it as close as I can using a little uh, Beal tilt meter which is similar to the Wixie one and others I get it as close as I can and then I glue four of them together um, and then true up the joint between the between the two halves when I go ahead and put it together. So uh, that was a lot. Um, I did have some maple stock. It's got some curl in it. It's not the curliest stuff I've ever used, but um, it's got a little bit of curl in it. These going to be our staves, so I have some pieces for the, to cut for that. So the next thing to do is get set up and actually use get the blade tilted and start making the first cut on all the. Um, on all the pieces. Okay, here's the piece put together with just some tape and some rubber bands. Uh, and you can see that I got a, a gap here in this one. If you look at the top, 
there's a gap in a couple of them this one and this one and I and I knew it wouldn't be perfect I had the uh, my little Beal tilt meter told me that the blade was at 21.7 uh, but who knows that's probably plus or minor it's whatever um, the good news is I can put this together in halves and then um, true up the face between the two of them and it goes together fine um, what I plan on doing is putting some I made some little inserts to go between the pieces and I don't know if you can see it there I get a little bit closer maybe it's a, a piece of 1 8 inch holly and I, on either side of it is some jatoba uh, and my plan is for the the top couple three rings to be jatoba uh, the bottom ring and the very top ring will be Wenge. Uh, I wanted ebony, but uh, the price of ebony was <laughs> cost prohibitive for this project. So uh, the, um, the, the Wenge will be fine. Uh, to put the thing together, there's really no easy way to clamp it. Um, there are jigs you can make or whatever, but I don't plan to go into production with these things. So uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time making a, a glue up jig for this. I'm going to use this uh, tight bond thick and quick or quick and thick. I've used it before. I think it used to be called their molding glue or something like that. It, it's very thick. It tacks fast. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put these together uh, two at a time. Uh, and just hold them till the glue tacks up uh, and then once it's set um, sets up I'll join the pairs and then uh, once I get the four parts put together um, I'll true up the joint and glue, glue the last piece together so uh, once I do that then uh, we can take it over to the lathe and my little jig um, I don't know if you can tell here it it kind of produced a sawtooth kind of thing with the with the top and the bottom and I if, if I was to do it again, I'd probably remake that jig so that didn't happen. So all I did was, to get a f fairly flat surface, I went to the bandsaw and I just kind of nipped off a little uh, piece of the top here to make it so. Because I'm going to put it on the lathe, um, the large end against the headstock first. So um, I wanted it to be relatively flat. So anyway, that's the, where we are with that. So I'm going to start gluing up these these pieces uh, the glue dries pretty fast so you can you can get them all put together pretty quickly uh, and before I let it put it on the lathe I'll let it all dry overnight or since this is the end of the weekend it'll probably be till next week so it'll be good and dry by the time I get ready to put it all together so time to start gluing up a couple of pieces Well, as luck would have it, this piece was just wide enough to go through the joiner. Uh, had that not worked out, I would have taped a piece of sandpaper to the top of the uh, table saw and uh, just kept uh, sand on it till I got it nice and flat. But this worked pretty well. Finally time to put this piece on the lathe. I have the uh, top piece in the uh, large jaws with some rubber bumpers there to hold it and I got a large uh, live center and a cone center in the uh, 
tailstock and I'm just using a roughing gouge to make the piece round. I'm just using a, a parting tool to clean up the uh, small end of the vessel. Then I'll switch it around and uh, clean up the top part that I couldn't get what that was up against the large jaws there. Yeah, I'm sorry about the shaky video. I think my tripod was actually up against the side of my lathe. <laughs> and the lathe is uh, it's not all that heavy duty and tends to vibrate a little bit. So I think I was shaking the camera. So. Sorry about that. Um, uh, I think that's the only the only clip that I actually did that. All right. Uh, hollow out this these vessels. I I got this uh, hollowing system here, and it's called the El elbow tool, E L B O tool, and it's made by um, Tim Yoder, who's a wood turner. Um, if you search him on the internet you'll um, you'll find him uh, he has a lot of um, YouTube videos I think it goes under the name of uh, wood turning with Tim or something like that I'll, I'll put a link down in the um, in the uh, notes below um, way back when he had a show on on uh, PBS called wood turning workshop and um, he was really watching that show was really the reason I decided to buy this lathe off of Craigslist and uh, give wood turning it a try. So uh, it's what I like about this one. It's uh, very articulated. Uh, as you can see, it clamps onto the quill of your tailstock. Uh, and the bar on the rides on your bar with the cutter head rides on your tool rest. And there is a laser on it. If I can get it in there, there you can see it right there. Um, now what I like about this one. This is a uh, uh, he put a lot of effort into re in research in lasers. This is an industrial laser, uh, and it's not battery powered. It actually plugs in. The cord goes down through the this tube. as hollow goes through and comes out the back, and it it uh, actually plugs in. So um, I like that. Um, overall, it uh, it really does a good job. So um, uh, I'm going to do now is get set up. What I have is I have the the piece in the lathe that's being held on by the uh, the large jaws on this side and I put my steady rest up here to kind of keep everything nice and steady because we're going to be hollowing sideways on this on this piece so um, I haven't really set the laser yet um, one of the ways that you can do it is you can put your finger down here and try to set it that way uh, I never had much luck with that so what I what I do what I did was is uh, mark the diameter which is the outside diameter or the inside diameter of the piece is going to be a quarter of an inch the wall thickness is going to be a quarter of an inch and then once I get the get hollowed down to there then I just set the uh, laser for where I want it and I'm good to go so all right let's uh, get set up here and we'll do some hollowing Okay, this is from the other side. I'm getting ready to set the laser so I can get the thickness of this vessel set. Um, I messed with it for a little while till I got it where I wanted it. What I was looking for was the laser just to drop off or almost drop off the side uh, when I was at the, the quarter inch thickness. So once I got it set, it was time to go back and finish hollowing this piece.
Well, I hollowed down from the narrow end about as far as I could go. Actually, what happened, the wheels on the uh, steady rest got in the way, then I couldn't see the laser anymore. So uh, I have it reversed now. I did the same thing. I marked a quarter inch thickness on just, I, I didn't really need to do that because I never changed the setting of the laser, but it was more for a visual reference for me for any, than anything else. So. Uh, once I had it flipped around here, I just hollowed it the rest of the way down. I do have it in my jaws and expansion mode, so it's being held very firmly. This is just a view from the other side, so you can kind of give you an idea of what it was I was looking at when I was hollowing this piece out. So it's just a matter of watching the laser, and you can almost do the uh, howling by feel, although I could see pretty well inside this vessel. So that worked pretty well. So let's go back to the, uh, the other angle and uh, show you some more of the uh, howling of this piece. Once I finished uh, hollowing it out, I, I just cleaned up the inside with a uh, negative rake scraper. Uh, once I had that part done, I sanded it up to 220. Alright, that's how I made the uh, staved piece of this, this vessel. The process was the same for, for all of them. So once you had the jigs made and, uh, and understood the process, it was easy enough to make three. Uh, so uh, that was how I did that part. Uh, in, in the next video, I'll show you how I finished this piece and we'll do the top segment and the bottom segmented pieces and put the whole thing together and turn it. So thanks for watching this video. I'll put up some photos of the three pieces at the end here. Uh, and I hope you see you in the next video.